In this video, I'm going to tell you the number one trait that real men have. If you develop this, you're going to go very, very far in reclaiming your place in the world. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Amin and I pretty much wrote the book on Islamic masculinity. To become a real man, it seems complicated, right? You got to work out, you got to make money, you got to do this, develop your jawline, all of this crazy stuff. And some of those are worth trying, but the first thing to do is focus on your discipline. When I was working on my book, The Shepherd's Way, I found a very interesting fact that the most obvious trait of a real Muslim man is self-control or discipline. And you know it's real because it comes from the Messenger of Allah and the Qur'an itself. For example, the Prophet himself, he walked into a room where the Sahaba, his companions, the people that were following him and learning from him, they were there wrestling each other. And you know how it is, we like to compete, we like to compare, we, need, we like to see who is the strongest. And the Prophet came and he asked a question as though he was trying to teach them a lesson. He said, what are you doing? They replied, well, we're wrestling. He said, you know, what for? They said, we'll see who's the strongest. And that was the teaching point that came up. He said, the strong one, Laysa Shadid, the strong one is not the one who can wrestle, who can wrestle people to the ground. The strong one is the one who can control his anger when it overcomes him. And so that is an example of discipline, of self-control, that when you feel the anger, and we could say men feel anger stronger than women do. So it's something we struggle with a lot of the time. If you can control the anger, if you have that self-control, that discipline, then you're strong. You're a real man. Another example is Abdullah bin Umar, the son of Umar al-Khattab. The Prophet ﷺ said about him, Ni'ma rajul Abdullah law kana yusalli min al-layl. What a great man Abdullah is if only he prayed the night prayer. And what does the night prayer mean? It means getting up in the middle of the night when everyone else is asleep and you would much rather be curled up in bed. You get up and you pray for the sake of Allah. What is that more than discipline and self-control for the sake of Allah? Also, a big deal for Muslim men is praying salah, praying your prayers in the masjid with the other men. This is something more emphasized for men. It's something that us men do. We pray in the jama'ah, we stick to the brotherhood. And when we pray, we have to be disciplined. We have to have self-control. You know how it is, people don't want to touch feet. One person wants to go ahead of the other. But what a Muslim man should do is have the discipline, have the self-control and the ability to self-organize and put ego aside and say, I'm going to fall in line. I'm going to follow whatever line is set. I'm going to get that row straight. And this is another example of self-control and discipline. Going to the masjid, no matter when it is, early morning for Fajr when it's cold, in the middle of the day when it's really hot, late at night when it's Isha, we go to the masjid because we have that discipline. And finally, a great example is the Prophet Yusuf when the beautiful and high status lady came to him, approached him, tempted him, unsuccessfully seduced him. What did he say? Did he fall into it or did he have discipline? He had self-control. And he said, no, I'm not falling for that. I'm not falling for that. And today's world is crazy when it comes to self-control and the lack of discipline that we are taught and trained and programmed to have. Nike tells us, just do it. Tinder tells us to just swipe. Just swipe. It's very easy. Just keep swiping. TikTok tells us, keep swiping. Keep swiping. And iPhone notifications call us and bring us back into the ecosystem of zero discipline. It really sounds like the dream of Alex de Crowley, a famous and controversial Satanist who said, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. In other words, it's a Satanist dream to have a society where people are just doing whatever they will, whatever they want, with no discipline and no self-control and no real men in sight. And actually the idea of following your desires and following whatever you want to do and the concept of freedom and the emphasis and obsession over freedom is a strong trait throughout all of Satanism. We can find hints of this as well in modern movements and the modern global culture of just be yourself. Tell them to accept you for who you are. In other words, however you are, however terrible you are, you might be fat, you might be obese, you might be ill, you might be unhealthy, you might be sick in the head. But no, no, just ask people to accept you for who you are. Don't have discipline, don't have self-control, don't change who you are, don't accept that you have flaws and you need to fix them. No, no, just have no self-control, no discipline, and go with wherever your desires take you, even if it means dying from obesity, from high blood pressure, from diabetes, and worse. So in other words, this concept of having no self-control, no discipline, this is a satanic principle which plays into the liberal world that we inherit today. 
Meanwhile, Allah tells us the opposite in the Quran. He says, have you seen he who has taken his desires as his God? And Allah sent him astray and put a seal over his heart. Then who will guide him after Allah? Will you not be reminded? So now we know the number one trait of a Muslim man is to have that self-control, is to have that discipline. And we've seen many examples of it from the great people that we look up to. How do we actually develop it? Because it's very difficult to develop. It's not something that can just come like that when we decide and we're motivated in the moment. In her book, The Willpower Instinct, Dr. Kelly McGonagall actually talks about discipline and self-control as a muscle. So if you think of going to the gym and working out your muscles, you do your progressive overload, which means lifting heavier and heavier weights on a steady basis to build up the strength of your muscle. That is what we need to do with our self-control. We need to slowly build up the strength of our self-control, of our discipline. She also says that willpower is something that you can lose energy from and therefore not be able to have as much willpower. So you might find that when you come home tired from work, you're less able to control your urges and your desires. You might even find that in Ramadan when you're very tired, you can't control your urges and desires even though you're in Ramadan. So therefore we wanna to try to do two things as a starter, as a beginning place. Number one is reduce the places where you're exerting a lot of effort and trying to be disciplined. So instead of trying to do five, six different things where we're really trying to focus on building discipline in those areas, we'll just start with one. So it could be, I'm going to pray all my salah on time. As soon as I hear the adhan, I'm going to go and pray. It could be that I am already praying everything on time and this time I'm going to actually go and pray in the masjid. It could be that I'm not reading any Quran now. I'm going to start by reading one ayah a day. Or it could be that you're not exercising at all and you're just going to start a five minute workout in your bedroom even from home. So we're only focusing on one habit at a time, one thing that requires us to be more disciplined and we're growing from there. And notice as well with my examples that they are small things. So we also want to start with what's called tiny habits. So reading one A a day, doing 10 push-ups a day, something like that to get us in the momentum. Because a lot of behavior change, a lot of what we're trying to do here as Muslim men is to have long-term success with our behavior change. And so we don't want to feel a lack of momentum, a lack of motivation and give up. We want to set ourselves up to win in the long term. And that's why we have the vision and the foresight to know that if I can start with 10 push-ups today, then in 100 days, maybe I'll be doing 100 press-ups a day. And there's a lot more to say when it comes to developing discipline, but these are some practical things to get started today. Start with one habit, pick one habit today. So remember brothers, when I was researching what it means to be a man in the sight of Allah, I found discipline to be the number one trait. So if you want to develop it, remember, start small, start in one focused area and develop from there. So if you enjoyed this video and you want more videos on how to become a better man and reclaim your place in the world, then subscribe to this channel and check out the playlist right over there where we discuss similar topics. Assalamu alaikum. Take care. See you around, bros.